Well, hey everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to Advent Member Talks. My name is Sam, my pronouns are they, them, and I am the Director of Member Experience here at Advent Coworking. We are a creative co-working community, an event space, podcast studio, yoga studio, and art gallery. And we love getting put, putting on this weekly event. Um, each week features a different Advent member on the topic of their choosing. We host it here on Facebook every Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. And you can also watch our previous talks on our YouTube channel, Advent Coworking Videos. So I'm really excited today to be joined by Steve. Um, Steve's going to be talking about some UX prototyping. So if you have any questions for him throughout the talk, go ahead and comment those questions and we'll have a short Q&A at the end. So Steve, thank you for being here. I'll hand it over to you. Okay. Am I, uh, I'm live. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's very nice to be here. This is my first member talk. So um, uh, we'll just start. Um, so I'm going to just bring up my, share my uh, screen because I've got a few slides and then we want to share screen one. Share. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I am uh, from Midwood Usability. I've been at uh, Advent Coworking for about five years and uh, today I want to talk about uh, UX prototyping, UX being user experience. And um, what we'll do is I'm, I want to talk about the value of prototyping um, <clears throat> and how you do it and how it can easily be done, but also um, talking about it from the perspective of either your small business owner or your product owner and you're developing your ideas and what you want to build and then uh, then working with the design team or even doing the design or development work yourself but this prototyping talk is aimed more towards those stakeholders and business owners up front trying to uh, visualize and articulate their ideas so that they can get developed um okay let's see if the PowerPoint works. There we go. Okay. So I just want to uh, step back a little bit and set the context for um, product design. And when I say product design, this can be if you're developing an application, like a desktop application, maybe it's an or a smartphone, tablet application, or even if it's just your website. And, and I was thinking about this, and there are several different um, um, environments where we do product design. You could be a solo uh, person, so you're a small business, you just started out, it's just you. Um, and some characteristics of that type of business is that as the only person who's involved in developing the product or the website, you have a very clear vision of what you want. You likely are doing everything by yourself and you're probably not using a lot of money and bootstrapping a lot of it. So in this environment, there's a lot of control and direct communication between what's what you think you're going to develop and then what you develop because you're the one who does it all. Uh, next up on the scale would be maybe a small business. And this one is where you have a, 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 maybe a little bigger team, um, but not too many people. And you're still able to have pretty good direct communication between all the players. So between the stakeholders, maybe the owner, uh, operations manager, your developer, everyone's probably working really close and a lot of face-to-face -face and direct communication. Um, you probably still have an environment where people are wearing multiple hats. So maybe your developer is also your visual designer and your copywriter is also your marketing director. Um, in this small business environment, you are likely because you have more people, you have maybe more expertise. Maybe you have someone who has training and user experience or someone who has more formal product management or project management. And so you start to develop um, a little bigger team and there's a little more requirement for communication. And then the last uh, uh, area is, um, or, um, uh, is the enterprise. And this is, this is a larger company. 
you're working on large teams, you most likely have very specialized roles. So you'll have a developer, you'll have a visual designer, you'll have a copywriter, you'll have a product manager, you'll have marketing executives, you'll have marketing specialists. Um, there be all these uh, specialized roles who have training and experience in those things. Uh, there's maybe more mature processes and more resources. So there's more money um, to carry out bigger projects. Uh, communication becomes a much bigger deal. And uh, so the, um, and, and one thing uh, when I'm setting the stage for where we could put prototyping into all these environments is that in these different areas, um, there are different, uh, uh, there's a spectrum of, um, of uh, attributes and one is risk. So when you're dealing, and this is for, the risk and the success of your project. So if you're a solo person, because you're doing it all, there's probably less risk for launching something that doesn't quite work because you're probably not impacting a huge audience. You can quickly um, iterate and, and fix it. But when you get to the enterprise level, if you launch something and it bombs, um, you could have very serious reputational risk, legal risk. Um, huge costs to rework things, so the so the um, so that so that component goes up. Um, another thing is the feedback and decision loop, and this is talking about communication. Is that and if you're in a solo group, um, it's real easy to make decisions because you make them. In the enterprise scale, when you make decisions. Um, you may have to go up through multiple levels to get review and approval. It takes time. You play that whole telephone game where um, you say something and the next level says something a little bit differently. And then finally the decision maker hears something probably totally different than what you were requesting to make a decision on. Um, and then product feature set, uh, again, it's a lot simpler in the solo uh, and then at the enterprise level, it becomes a lot more complex. You're dealing with more um, more features um, and uh, bigger apps. And then stakeholders, fewer at the solo level, all the way up to more with the stakeholders. So the one thing that is um, the big takeaway with this and, and why I think it's so important to understand these spectrums of um, risk and, and the speed of making decisions and the product features is that clear communication is essential in any product design environment. Um, and this is where we're going to see in a minute how the prototyping really helps make the communication so much easier when you're talking about creating new products or uh, modifying your existing products. So um, design process in general at a high level, we have an idea, we build it, we launch it, we see how it works, so we monitor it, and then we go back and tweak it. So this is a pretty uh, elementary design process, um, but essentially this is this is what happens. Um, this works well, and I've seen this in, in most of my work because as in the inside the business, we know the technology and we know the business requirements we, uh, because we live and breathe those things all the time. Um, the things that have that usually uh, we would have questions with, and, and this is where the risk is from that previous slide about the clear communication. Um, is it really what stakeholders want? So we build it. And I've seen this happen before where we go through and we build the whole thing and we launch it and the stakeholders go, well, that really wasn't quite what I was asking for. And we all say, well, we gave you that Excel sheet with all those requirements and you said that was what you wanted. Um, is the solution you're building the right, the most right solution. I say most right because you never can have a perfect solution because uh, in sort of today's world, you're always just putting out what your best guess is and then you're iterating it and are constantly improving it. But how do you know what this idea is that you have is really gonna resonate with, with customers? Will they adopt it? Um, can customers use it? This is my um, area of expertise and usability is, you know, you have this great idea and this great product and you launch it, but the way it's designed is is unusable and people can't even figure out how to sign up or how to use the functionality. Um, 
how much will it cost to build? So you have the idea, but can you accurately estimate the cost to build and the time to build um, up front? And so, oops, boop. Okay, so the one thing that we can do to help answer all those open questions is do the prototype. And this is between the have an idea and the build it stage. So what is a prototype? And um, we probably, if anyone's done any design thinking work, um, you've, you've been exposed to prototypes, like paper prototypes. Um, but uh, in the uh, prototype, in the context of product development, it's a tangible, tangible, tangible representation to capture design. Uh, we do them quickly, uh, making them interactive, meaning uh, it's something users can see and click around and play with. It's just enough fidelity to get the point across. Um, we're not trying to show every detail of a design and we're not trying to have polished copy or polished graphics. Um, basically, if we, you know, we have this, we're in that idea stage, the product managers or the owner says, hey, I wanna do this. And then we start off and we build a prototype to start capturing those ideas very quickly. And then through uh, a process of reviewing and iterating, you can refine that prototype until it looks like what whoever is asking for that product uh, says, yep, that's what I, that's what I want to see built. Um, so how do we use prototypes in the three phases of, um, of a project? And, and this is again, a sort of a simplified um, uh, model of phases, but in a discovery environment, um, we use these kind of uh, interactive prototypes to align the stakeholders uh, with something visual. Uh, you can actually take the prototypes and write requirements from them, and you can also scope the effort. Um, and then we can also use it way in the beginning of the process to do usability testing and validate the prototype concept with users and tweak it to make sure that whatever we end up building is actually gonna be something the users can use and want, and it solves a business problem. In the design phase, you can take that prototype and use it again to align the design team on what they're building, what they're writing. I've seen great examples of, we take the prototypes and it, they lay out the information hierarchy of a page. So the copywriters know what the most important concept is to write on the page. Um, also, it gives a sense of, uh, you know, how much space copywriters will have um, to fill in with words. And the prototypes, you can even design them to be um, responsive. So you can show mobile views and desktop views, which really helps the design team and the, the visual designers and the copywriters um, to, to make sure whatever they're building sort of fits in to what the uh, vision is for the, um, for the product. And again, more usability testing. You always wanna put whatever you're doing in front of users. And then, in, and then in the development phase, um, uh, prototypes are really effective at going through and helping to write the QA test scripts. Um, you uh, developers, um, uh, it will provide them clarification on interaction. So if you're developing an app or something that's got functionality, um, oftentimes when a developer reads a written requirement, there's it leaves so much to interpretation about how it actually works. And you can uh, design these prototypes to actually provide more detail. Um, so the developer can look at it and know that, oh, they're wanting a drop down, or they want radio buttons, uh, they want uh, modal windows, that type of thing. And then also one of the one of the coolest things I've seen with uh, prototyping, prototype uses, and especially in large enterprise environments is, um, once this project is in development, uh, we can take the prototype and send it to the training people and they can create training for the operations folks. So basically the call center can have a sort of um, uh, functioning prototype to use to learn how to use the new functionality. So when it's launched, they already know how to use it and can help customers through it. Okay. And then the one big point about why prototypes work, and especially 
when we talk about aligning stakeholders and aligning the design team and being able to write requirements and scope efforts is, um, is that prototypes are visual. When everyone looks at something visual, they know exactly, I mean, they all see the same thing. So if you look at, I'm thinking of like a, you know, a stoplight, we'll, we would all see, uh, you know, a stoplight with a red light, a yellow light and a green light. And there's no question about what it is. But when we write words, um, everyone um, mentally will see something different in their head when they read those words. And um, gosh, I wish it, there's a great graphic and I should have put it in here about um, about this thing where um, they had a, um, oh, it was a cartoon. But anyway, it, it, it showed, uh, it had a, a design statement and then all the different stakeholders, it drew a picture of what they saw and everything was totally different. Um, but that is, um, so that so that's the value of the prototypes. Um, I will uh, talk real quickly about prototyping tools. Um, they're, they're, I just, Axure is my favorite tool. Um, and the two other really popular ones right now are Envision and Marvel. Um, Axure is, um, it's more expensive than other apps, uh, but it's very uh, uh, good at creating interactive um, prototypes. So you can create really complex functionality, but you can also just really create simple wireframes and clickable wireframes. Also, it's good for um, doing um, uh, mobile mobile prototypes. And then Envision and Marvel are both web-based apps. They're, they have free versions and they're also a lot less expensive. Um, and they, do, they integrate more with some um, design tools like Adobe XD and Sketch. Um, they're okay for simple interactions. So basically if you're just gonna link screens together, they're fine for doing that. But if you wanna create dynamic dropdowns and more advanced modals and uh, more realistic sort of mobile experiences. Uh, they they have they tend to have a lot of issues. And then also when you start doing usability testing, um, they, they they introduce a lot of um, problems in the usability testing because when you view it view the prototype, the users see a bunch of the Envision and the Marvel um, uh, um, Chrome around the prototype, which is always confusing when you're trying to get a user to focus on on uh, what you're looking at. Okay, so we're gosh, half an hour runs out quickly. So I just I wanted to do a quick demo because this whole idea of prototyping is this is not something that you need to be a designer to do or have um, um, you know have lots of experience in, in experience design. Um, and so the demo I want to show you is um, the, uh, of something actually my son did, who's a high school student. So he's the product owner, he had no design experience, his first time prototyping, and he had to deliver a physical prototype for a project. Um, and then we did, actually I'm going to skip through these slides because um, that is just sort of what he did to come up with the ideas. Uh, basically, what he wanted to do was um, for a school project is he wanted to create a carbon tracker. And the idea is how much carbon do you save by using alternate forms of transportation? And it was going to be a mobile app. Uh oh, my. Uh, and then uh, in the prototype meter to communicate the key functionality. Um, of this carbon tractor and be interactive. His stakeholders, of course, would be his teacher. And one second while I get, I'm gonna share share my iPhone screen and it, I need to open up um, while I was talking this, the um, iPhone went to sleep and the screen mirroring stopped. Okay, here we go. And one second. Nine, two, eight, five, nine, two, eight, five. Almost there. Perfect. And then. Okay. 
So uh, hopefully everyone can see the iPhone. So this is this is my iPhone. And then I'm going to go over here. And in the bottom row, you see the CO2 carbon tracker. This is just a HTML bookmark for the prototyping website. And then and you tap on it and it brings up the app. And uh, and I get a little message saying, great job, you saved 8,080 grams of carbon. I can add it to the log. Um, and one thing interesting in the prototype is that the log actually, you know, adds the 8880, but it's it's all sort of fake data because one of the things when you prototype is you're just doing enough prototyping to get the idea of a log. So we don't need to make it uh, record every single interaction, but just to show that when you when you do a calculation, then you can add it to a log, and then um, and then we added a little uh, dynamic functionality. So let's say today I rode the car and I normally to drive my electric car um, and I want to compare again maybe 50 miles and calculate and so uh, I used 20,000 grams of CO2 today and zero grams would have been my electric car and then I get a little message saying uh oh you use 20,000 grams of CO2 more than normal with the frowny face, and then you can add it to your log. Um, so, so when I, and, and that's basically the extent of the functionality. And so, you know, there's like a little gear here that um, actually doesn't work if you tap on it, but um, really what we wanted to do was just um, illustrate how, you know, what the flow of the application could look like and now when the teachers see this, they totally understand what he was trying to communicate as opposed to if he had just uh, drawn it or written a description of it. And this same principle can be applied to in the business world um, with, with anything you're developing. And, um, and one great example, I, I worked on a project once where we were de designing a, a brand new system for um, uh, um, uh, extended warranties for vehicles and it was a really complex system that involved auto dealers and consumers and dealerships and we we built a prototype of the base functionality of all the different parts of the system and we were able to have the technology team go in well first off we had all the stakeholders like look at this and we continually iterated with their input to finally get it down to what the functionality and the flows that they wanted. Then we had the technology team actually write their requirements to do all the cost estimating um, off of the prototypes. And this was a multi-million dollar project and they estimated everything and developed it uh, in the timeline with like a 95% accuracy from the initial estimate, which is like unheard of um, for large projects to have that, that level of um, fidelity in your estimates. So. Um, I'm going to, Sam, that was, that was it for the demo. And um, so if we want to open it up for questions, then I know we are close to time. Absolutely. You want to just stop sharing your screen. That is so cool to see um, stop sharing the what your, you know, what your son created. That's definitely way better than I did on my, any high school project. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um, so we did have some few, a few questions come in or messages. Let's see. I'll ask, have time for maybe two of them. Um, depending on your computer's hardware, oh, wait, hold on. Let's see. Okay. What kinds of questions should clients ask themselves about their design goals before they meet with a UX designer? Um, I, you know, I'm, I think it's part of um, the 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 biz, the clients need to understand what their business goals are. Like, are they so they want to do something? Are they trying to make more money with it? Are they trying to save money with it? Um, how many you know users do they think it'll impact? Um, because as part of the UX designers due diligence, we would come in and and try to make sure that we we understand what their goals are. 
from the business perspective. Um, and then also what they know about the user. So then we could start filling in that information. But I, I think the, the first thing, it would be great if, if product owners like had a clear, like when you ask them what's, what business, like corporate business goal or strategic goal is this project fulfilling? Uh, that they would have an answer for that. Because a lot of times they don't, because sometimes it's just, um, you know, a stakeholder went to a conference and heard a good idea and came back and said, hey, we need to do this. Or they get a call from from one client who, you know, has a big voice and they're like, oh, we need to do this new feature for one person. And, um, okay. Thank you. So we'll see one more question. Um, how, I guess, let me see, let's see. We got a few, so I'm, I'm just trying to choose. Oh, I've got more time too, I can stay. <laughs> if you ever run these over, so. Um, let's do this one. So how do you respond to small businesses that say they don't have the funds to invest in UX design? You kind of talked about that before the different types of businesses. Yeah, that's, um, I, it, um, you basically, um, I've done some things with small businesses where, uh, you know, they, they um, oh gosh, that, that's a tough one because um, you, you either come in and just do something very low fidelity and very quick. Mm -hmm. Maybe you offer some uh, consultation, like hourly consultation. So you say, hey, you start coming up with your designs and I'll take a look at them and tell you what I think. Um, the, that's one way to approach it. Um, the other way is, um, you know, if you think they have something that's going to be, you know, more business later on, then, um, you know, propose a smaller project initially just to get your foot in the door. Um, and then, um, but, but you want to be careful about uh, doing too much discounting and not, and doing work for free. Like you really, don't want to do it. I would, I, I would say, you know, do work at your normal rate, but just scope it way down to like, hey, I'll give you a wireframe for one page, um, or do or do the hour, hourly consultations. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for joining us today. I really didn't know anything about UX prototyping, so I really learned a lot from this. I'm sure everyone watching did as well. Uh, if folks want to learn more about this specific topic or just get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, they um, So midwoodusability.com is our website. You can go there. And then also um, I have, um, uh, it's steve.shang at midwoodusability.com um, is my email. And then I'm also here at Advent, so I'm here most days. Uh, and you can ask Sam where my office is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, well, thanks, Steve. When we upload this video to our YouTube channel, Advent Coworking Videos, I'll make sure to include your website as well as that email address for folks to reach out. Okay. Um, but great job. Thank you for leading the member talk today. I am also on LinkedIn. And so if you send a Perfect. message through LinkedIn, I'll respond to that. Perfect. Sounds great. All right, Steve, thanks. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, I hope you'll join us again next week. Uh, Admin Member Talks, it's every week, Tuesdays at 4.30. Um, and quick pitch, we do have our signature event, F Up Level Up, tomorrow evening. So definitely check that out on our event calendar. And we hope to see you there. Have a great evening.